Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a quick overview with my nine minutes and 50 seconds of near metals. And I'm going to focus in particular on one of our projects which is shot into prominence, and that's a battery recycling project. So if I've done an OK job, what I should leave you with is a sense of near metals, you know, notwithstanding being a diversified business, that we've got a pretty consistent strategy in developing our projects, but that we actually do things quite a bit differently to our peer group. So, as a snapshot for the business, and I suspect most of you probably haven't heard of us, but it's, a, it's an ASX listed company, but we're a project development com company, more so probably than being a traditional mining house per se. Um, and the thread that ties all our projects together is a commonality between the minerals and materials um, and the EV and energy storage sector. So whether it be vanadium, titanium, uh, or battery recycling, they're all connected in that way. Um, based in West Perth, 20 odd staff um, listed in 2003, pardon me. <clears throat> We've got a bit of a track record in terms of execution success. And I say that because uh, this year in February, we, um, we sold our remaining interest in the Mount Marion lithium mine. Um, we developed that with partners. Uh, we spent $3 million and we essentially pulled $200 million out of that project. Um, and that was a staged sell down. What that's done is it's given us a balance sheet to pursue our growth projects. Um, and as a result, you can see we've got a sort of $107 million, no debt. But I'm going to talk to you about, um, after I do this, I'm going to talk to you about sort of one key project and, and I'll mention two others in passing. So essentially the register, circa 8,000 shareholders, um, a big cash balance, trading presently just market caps just below the cash balance. Um, you know, why is that? Fundamentally, it, there's no reason why that should be the case. Everything's going great guns. All three of our main projects have partners, so perhaps that's an investment opportunity. Um, smattering of small institutions um, and a retail tail. So, in terms of the approach and being a little bit different, I'll give Mount Marion as an example. So, you know, we've gone into some of these projects and assets and put our foot on them early before they're sexy. Mount Marion um, lithium we did many, many years ago. We did some work with the drill bit in the test lab and at the end of the day we ended up um, attracting some big billion dollar companies to help us develop that project. And we did that because we've got a strong view that with partners you, uh, you fast track what you're doing, you get the scale that you want and you reduce risk. And that's a big central tenet to what we do. And that's something we want to repeat with our other projects across the board. So those projects look like this. There's a lithium ion battery recycling project. Um, there's a lithium refinery project, which is using the offtake we took away from our deal with Ganfeng and mineral resources when we sold Mount Marion. Uh, and there's a vanadium and titanium project that's based in WA. We own it 100%. It's had $30 million worth of, of drilling and exploration work on it spent by us. Um, and the commonality against those projects is all three of them have partners. They're all at a very advanced stage, um, which is why we're a little bit uh, betwixt as to why the share price is trading where it is. However, and there's also some nickel exploration which is reaping some, some results and we've got a nice resource there at Mount Edwards. So what this is when it all comes on the screen is a a weird little candy cane which shows sort of globally how we are placed uh, in the value chain. So lithium, titanium, vanadium um, are our mining minerals if you like and if you look on the far right hand side there's a range of minerals which we're extracting from batteries. Um, if you look at where we actually have exposure the blue NM symbols is where we have projects. So in a mining sense we have an, an offtake from Mount Marion the Barambi Vanadium and Titanium project. In a processing sense, there's a refinery project and also the processing that we'll do of our Vanadium and Titanium. And then also at the back end, you've got the lithium ion recycling. The applications these things go to is a mixture of today's applications versus new world. Um, today's applications, Vanadium, 
you know, steel, essentially, titanium as pigments, lithium, ceramics and glass, etc. And then the New World stuff is electrolytes for vanadium, titanium anodes and, uh, and obviously lithium-ion batteries. So now, now I'll cut to the chase of the recycling project. So this project for us really is a hedge against you know, the upstream volatility you see with minerals. And it's particularly exciting in our view and it's a big opportunity because spent batteries and scrap material, it's not optional what end users do with this stuff. Um, there's regulation that says you must, notwithstanding there's holes in that and some of it still ends up in landfill. Stakeholders insist on it. Um, trapping critical minerals and minerals that we just heard from the panellists are going to be in short supply is very important. But you overlay that in particular with the fire risk associated with storing the spent batteries and um, this becomes pretty compelling. People can't do nothing about um, what's happening with the cells. So this tiny video talks to the opportunity for a minute if there's volume. Lithium-ion batteries pose a significant environmental and safety challenge because they are hazardous if not disposed of appropriately. Outside Asia, the majority of recycled lithium-ion batteries are partly processed via high-temperature smelting, which only recovers base metals, resulting in the loss of many valuable critical metals. Neometals' strategy to develop and enable projects across the battery value chain has led to the development of a unique proprietary process for recovering cobalt and other valuable materials from waste lithium ion batteries. Okay, so what we actually do, it's a two stage process. Um, first of all, you shred the cells. Um, we accept a range of different chemistries in consumer electronics and vehicles. Don't care about the format, can be prismatic, pouch, doesn't matter. What you end up doing is that at this stage you extract the steel, the plastics and the current collectors and you end up with a black powder if you like and that's no longer a fire risk. You can transport that black powder to, you know, it can be next door or it can be at a central hub elsewhere in the world um, to a refining stage which is sequential leaching, pulling out the critical metals which are the key payables. And, that, and what we've done at our pilot which is uh, in Lakefield in Canada as we've pulled out copper, cobalt, manganese and what remains is the, uh, the nickel and the lithium. So that'll be done by December. And what we've done is it was a good time to bring in a partner. Um, SMS Group is a big private German company. They're big, they have a global footprint and they're specialist metallurgical plant group. Um, so we've partnered with them. We have an MOU with them and what that essentially means is they have exclusivity for a very short period of time to complete their diligence. And that diligence looks like the outcome of our pilot plant. Um, and so that'll be done in December with a pilot with a view to joint venturing in March. We then move to build a demonstration here in Europe, uh, probably Austria. We share the costs and we make an investment decision come the end of next year. It could look like this, this is hypothetical. You're looking at the red bullseyes are SMS sites, permitted sites, the green dot centralised hub, the dark blue is you know potential shredding facilities and the light blue are all the different cell manufacturing sites that are predicted. And even since I did that, there's probably more blue dots. So the timeline I just mentioned, December pilot finished, March JV on this. We do use the data from the pilot to do a bigger feasibility build the demonstration and, and look to start construction beginning of next year. And in parallel, find the feedstock and the partners for all of this. So in closing, um, Near Metals has a little bit of form in project execution. Um, we're a group of sensible people. We're conservative with our cash balance. Um, yeah, and ultimately there's a lot going in. So the cash balance provides security in the fact that we don't like risk. Um, and the opportunity is we have the means to fund our projects to a point and that is to joint venture at which stage we want our partners to, uh, to start writing some checks. So with that, I think that's me.